Hey everybody, I'm Nathaniel Dodds from TopVid.com. Today we're gonna kick it old school with this Photoshop tutorial. This is one of the very, very, very first effects I ever learned how to create here in Photoshop way back in the mid 90s when I first opened Photoshop. Photoshop 4.0. And boy, does it feel like forever ago. I think I was only like seven or eight years old. Uh, but if you're wondering what this effect is, here it is. So there you go. That's the effect that we're going to create. If you do enjoy this tutorial, make sure you subscribe to the channel by using that little red button down there. Uh, and if you really enjoy this tutorial, well, there you go. A link just appeared right up there somewhere. That's my Photoshop course. You can pick up a copy of that Photoshop course. It helps us do what we do here at tutvid.com, and this entire channel is funded by viewers just like you. So thank you. With that out of the way, let's jump in and check out this video. So here we are in Photoshop. We've got this image. This is a free stock photo from unsplash.com. I'll have a link to it down in the bio or description of this video. And one of the first things that I like to do when I bring a stock photo for an effect like this into Photoshop is go image, image size, and just make sure the width and height of the image are manageable, that your computer can handle pushing filters on an image like this. If it's 7,000 pixels wide, it's gonna be a bit more difficult than if the image is you know, 3,000 or 1,000 or whatever number of pixels wide. So I got 3,000 by 2,000 pixels here. That's just perfect for me. And I'm going to right click on the background layer and choose to convert this to a smart object. We're converting it to a smart object because we're going to go filter and we're going to go pixelate and choose mesotint. And as we apply these filters, because this is a smart object over here, it's going to apply these as editable smart filters. So you're going to see exactly what that means in a moment. With mesotint, this is a completely randomized um, type of filter. And I like to go with coarse dots for this particular effect. Uh, medium lines, long lines, and medium strokes and long strokes also tends to work well. It's just a little bit of a different effect. I prefer the coarse dots look, so I'm going to choose OK, and it really fouls up our image. Now, this effect that we're creating, one of the cool things about it is you can really apply it to any photo you want, or you can just open a blank Photoshop document, go like filter, render, uh, clouds, and begin with that sort of base of black and white and create this exact effect uh, as well. But I find a really, really, really colorful photos just lend themselves to really, really cool effects. And they always, it, it's always going to look different. Every single time you do this, it's going to look a little different. So that's part of the beauty of this. All right, if I hit this little tiny white arrow, boom, I can see there's my mesotint uh, filter applied. It is, in fact, a smart filter. But the work has only just begun. We're going to go filter blur, and we're going to choose radial blur here. And uh, I like to go with a 100 amount, max it out. Blur method needs to be zoom. Uh, and the quality, I'm going to go with good. Uh, if you notice that the blur still looks too grainy and noisy, uh, just bump it up to best, but best, you know, it's going to take a little bit longer to render. So you can see here with our first blur, it looks really coarse. Now that, that is more uh, a matter of those very coarse mesotint dots being blurred than this filter being super low quality. I'm going to hit command or control F. And what that's going to do is apply the radial blur again. See that command or control F. So I'm going to just go command or control F. It's going to bring up the radial blur dialog box, 100 on the amount, blur method of zoom and a quality of good, of course. And we're going to apply that one more time, command or control F. And I'm going to hit OK. All right, so now that we have this sort of speeding, zooming image, this borderline uh, hypnotic, uh, we want to begin applying the filter distort twirl effect. Now, this is where things kind of get cool. So I like to go with, really, you can do an angle. You know, if you can go 50 degrees, you can go 200 degrees. I'm going to roll with something right down the middle at 100 degrees in terms of the angle, and I'm going to hit OK. Now, what I want to do here with this twirl, and this is part of the value of these smart filters, is we can come over here and double-click on this double line, and we can tell this twirl filter, hey, you know what? We want your mode to be set to lighten. And you're going to see it's going to immediately start giving us some sort of interlocking, intertwining lines. And I should mention that generally speaking with this type of effect, I like to use the light and blend mode. You could go with something like multiply. You could go with screen. Screen's going to kind of blow things out even brighter. You could go with something like overlay. These are all just different styles of effect. Overlay and soft light, they tend to be really heavy. I think doing something like lighten is kind of like the most modern and clean looking effect uh, for this effect that admittedly is, is kind of straight out of the 90s, but still kind of cool to be able to do nonetheless. We're going to go ahead and hit OK, and we need to apply a second twirl filter. So I'm going to use a hotkey Command or Control F. That was the last used filter was twirl. Command or Control F to apply a new twirl. And this one we're going to go with an angle of negative 100 degrees and hit OK. And you're going to see it's going to really kind of change the way things are looking here, right? It's going to drag and twist those lines. I'm going to double click on my double line. Let's try setting this to the blend mode of lighten as well and just see what it looks like. Because this actually doesn't look too bad. But what if we change it to lighten? 
we can see, well, look at that. It's actually giving us more lines and making it look like even more is intertwining and twisting and, and pulling through. So I'm going to hit OK. I'm going to leave that at lighten. So now that we've done that, really all we need to do is just increase the contrast, try to bring out some of the difference of these lines a little bit more. And part of the way we can try doing that is, number one, change the mesotint, right? So we can double click on this. It's going to say, look, everything is going to become all messed up, which is fine because we're not going to see it anyway. Oh, I could go with like medium strokes maybe. Let's try that. Hit OK. Let's see what this looks like. And you can see just by changing that, we get a very different and yes, some contrast has been added. So maybe that would have been a better a choice to go with from the get go. We'll, we'll leave that, but we're going to add even more contrast and we're going to do that by adding a levels adjustment layer. So we're going to click on the levels adjustment layer icon there, and we're going to drag the black stop in, I don't know, maybe about plus 15 there and we'll drag the white stop back, maybe a little bit kind of like that. So you can see there's before there's after we're just giving it a pop of contrast. Now we're going to begin editing and tweaking the color. So we're going to do that using a color balance adjustment layer. I'm going to click to add that. We begin with the midtones here. And what I'm going to do with midtones is go about plus 20 in the red department. Yeah, these are all just, you know, rough numbers. I'm going to push some magenta into it. So I'm going to push that back about negative 17. And I also want to push a little blue into it. So right about plus 10. Next, I'm going to go to the highlights. And with the highlights, I'm going to push more red into the highlights. Then I'll come over here. We'll push a little bit of magenta into the highlights. Not, not a huge, crazy amount. And I think we'll also push some blue into the highlights. You could try yellow in the highlights. Man, I think I prefer the blue in the highlights. So I'm going to go go right around plus 10, plus 12 with some blue in the highlights. Then I'm going to come over here to shadows. And with the shadows, I'm going to push cyan into the shadows. So something like that looks good. Then we'll push some magenta into the shadows, kind of, sort of like that. And then we definitely want to put blue in the shadows. So you can see just, just right there, we've kind of completely changed the color of this. We've made it look much more intense. We've made it really pop. And if you really want to take it a step further, what we can do is sharpen this. So we can actually add smart sharpening directly to this whole twisted effect. Uh, and it will just add it to our stack of filters here. So we can go filter, sharpen, we can choose smart sharpen and I'll just drag over my loop so I can kind of see the middle of my document. And if we really want to make this pop, we can push the amount up a lot and we could also push the radius up a lot. You just want to be careful when you really start pushing the radius and amount up, you really get this very halo-y, very fake looking effect. So I'm going to go with a, a radius of about 1.5 pixels and probably an amount of about 150%. And then we can reduce a little bit of noise. There's not going to be a crazy amount of noise in there, but I think that's about what I'm going to roll with 150, 1.5 and about 20% reduction of noise. Don't worry about the shadows highlights and we're going to roll with that. So I'm going to hit OK and it's going to sharpen that up. And you can see there smart sharpen has been added to the list of filters just like that. And guys, it's a pretty simple effect, but it's a pretty cool effect. And it's something you could now take this and use it as a texture. You could take it and apply it to a photo, use it as a background for something, all kinds of different things. But most of all, it's a really cool, like old school Photoshop effect that we can, we, we used to never be able to create it with one layer and smart objects smart filters. It allows us to create this entire effect with one single layer. Uh, and then of course the adjustment layers to add some contrast and color, just kind of mess around with it and customize it. But that's really it for this one. So for creating this crazy looking effect in Photoshop using but one single layer and the power of smart objects and smart filters and everything else that went into this tutorial, guys, that's it. Get it, got it, good. Nathaniel Dodson, tutvid.com. I'll catch you in the next one. And before you go, make sure you subscribe to my channel for more great tutorials every day. Also, buy my course. It helps us do what we do, and this channel is supported by viewers just like you. You can also just click the thumbnail and watch another video from this channel. See you next time, guys.